Hey, how you guys doing? How's everything going? Okay, doke. Oops, I have to. Uh, let's see here. Well, do this here. Let me see. So B five. All right. Well, what we're looking at right now is we have knight takes b5. That that's an idea. And uh, if we play c takes, uh, oops, c takes b5. We have bishop takes b7, and we pick up a um, rook. Now that's a, that is an idea. Let's see if we if there's anything uh, else that w um, is fun to play. He could play. Uh, okay, if knight takes b5, if knight c5, which is a bad move, we just play uh, knight takes a7, and we pick up the queen. Knight takes b5. This is this could be an idea. Knight takes b5. Uh, queen takes f2. Queen takes f2, and then c takes b5. But we still uh, we we, uh, we still at that point play um, bishop takes c7. So we're we still win on that line. Don't see anything wrong with taking, so let's go with it. Oh. Whoa. Okay, so it's a waste of a move. Huh. Why doesn't, let me see, why doesn't this idea? Oh, we're down in exchange, that's why. Queen b6. And he's covering that. Okay, I did not see that. Okay, so If we play queen h6, he will, our opponent will play queen g7. So that's not going to work. There's, uh, there is, um, bishop takes, uh, e5. Bishop takes e5. 
if bishop takes uh, g5, then rook uh, h8 is mate. Oops, mate. So we have a Morphe's mate there. If bishop takes e5, bishop uh, f6, Drink real quick, and we'll see what we gotta do. Hmm. Oh, interesting. Bishop takes a five. Bishop f6, rook takes f5. And then if bishop takes e5, rook takes f7. And then if queen, uh, if after this, Rook takes, and let, let's say that he goes bishop takes g5, then rook h8 is made again. The bishop takes seals the, the king from moving. There potentially might be one line that he could play, one. But I don't think uh, uh, bishop takes e5, queen e6, Then I think we can actually play in this line, queen, h6, uh, and he doesn't have enough time to take our, uh, he doesn't have enough time to take our, uh, our bishop because we'll mate him on h7. We also can grab the bishop too. Like bishop this this potentially could happen too. Bishop takes e5. If uh, queen e7, we could play queen takes uh, e7. Queen takes e7. And no, I don't think that that might not be a good idea because then he can take back, then he runs. So no, this isn't the best one move. Yeah, I'm liking this. Okay. Bishop F6. Rook takes. Let's see if rook takes, there's queen uh, e6. Well, then we then we actually uh, mate with queen takes g6 at that point, yeah. Because 
Shazam. This is an interesting line. These are, this is about combination now. Okay, if queen takes um, d5, queen takes d5, if uh, knight takes uh, d5, bishop takes d2, check. And whatever happens, we'll just put if the bishop takes d2, knight takes uh, d5. It would be up a, a whole uh, exchange. If, let's do this here, if queen takes, but now let's do um, if uh, queen takes d5, knight takes. Uh, d5 and he can't take because of the pin on the knight and let's see is there anything else that we can uh, do after takes can he do after takes well he could take the knight but that still loses so he could after um, queen takes d5 if bishop takes f6 we can play queen takes d2 check, king takes d2, and then we could play, um, we could actually liquefy down even further with uh, bishop takes c3 check, if king takes c3, then f takes um, uh, east f6, or sorry, g takes f6. And we're up a whole light squared bishop. We worked through it. Let's do it. There we go. We had all the lines done so that if if he tried any other line, we would have we have every line calculated that we know what to do. Okay. Ay, ay, ay. Okay, now we've entered the 2000 level, which is uh, good. We'll start getting some points. Now we just got to figure out the idea behind uh, black, white's uh, move and the drawback to it so that we can take advantage of uh, that. We know for a surety that um, he's, he's attacking our knight. He wants to remove the knight so that he can checkmate our, our uh, king. So, And the bishop on f2 is pinning our b6 pawn so what will happen is he can actually win the knight, win the pawn, and then we'd have to go in front, and then he'd just totally destroy us. So we have to not think that way, but you have to realize that we are under a lot of fire. We are, we're double attacked. We're attacked. Uh, our bishop's attacked on h6, I mean h4, and our um, knight is attacked on c6. Uh, so let's see what can we actually do here. Let's see what what did uh, D2 um, leave behind. Sometimes it's it's just a waste of a of a tempo of a move.
first first moves that I'm looking at. This looks crazy, I understand, but knight uh, knight d4. Knight d4 is a um, move. See if if knight d4, if bishop takes d4, then we have uh, bishop takes g3, g3 check, and uh, if the king goes to g1. Then we actually can set up for um, an attack by uh, a discover check with bishop takes f4 check. And then we can actually start more attacks happening down the pike on our side. Uh, queen g4 is, is, yeah, the only problem with uh, queen g4. Yeah, true. But um, remember, we also have um, a problem on our side, too. See, they don't have to uh, worry about... Um, on, now I'll show you what their response could be. Those are, those are good moves, but I just want to show you, it, when we play d4, the bishop doesn't have to take. They can actually uh, do this to us. Ugh. So, but you, we have to attack the queen because we're attacking the queen at that point and enforcing the uh, move. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Exactly, right. That, that, we can ash, well. We can actually deal with that. We we do have enough time. We do have enough time after that. Yeah, D T uh, D four. That's right. And if that's what you have to calculate, that's what I was gonna uh, go over is after taking. You would have to go king to um, B seven. This is kind of a forced uh, setup. And he re he'd probably have to play bishop takes b6, bishop takes b6. And at, that, and at this point, we can start our counterattack with bishop takes uh, g3. So we, we actually have to... Uh, I don't, wait a second. My bad. He can't take. He, um, we have a rook on g... I, was, I forgot. That's right. Yeah. Uh, queen can't reach, uh, yeah, uh, w at knight, knight, knight d, uh, knight to d, um, d4, though, is, is a very important move. It kind of clogs the position up. It attacks the queen at the same time. And all, and, and you also have the ability of playing knight to, then you can, if he doesn't do anything, let's say he just plays not good moves. We'll say not even a check. We'll just say he moves his C knight. We have the ability of going knight F3 uh, check as well. Or just plain on winning the queen. See, you have to you have to make a threat. But I think he can actually potentially win with uh, rook take. So I might actually be wrong here. Let me see. Knight D4. I think rook takes A4 might might actually win on the spot. Yeah, I think that does, huh? So G, let's see. So you're saying that G4, could you four creates a, a threat? See, we also the reason we have to move our knight too is we um, we have to get some protection on the B6 pawn. Otherwise, we're in a big time uh, problem. So we may uh, be able to just pick up a pawn. Maybe rather than knight to d4, we could potentially play knight takes uh, e5. Knight takes e5 is also a power move.
Oops. Yeah, I, I put in uh, d4. I've, I am. I put a4 instead of d4. Knight takes um, e5. Yeah. And that I believe that holds everything. But the only problem is, uh, I'm not. I'm not sure though about. Um, I guess he. I guess it wouldn't bother us if, if knight takes e5. I take c5. If uh, rook, like what uh, um, Smart said, rook takes a6. At this point, though, the rook's protecting, so bishop would have to. That's a check. That's a check. So, uh, or a5. I don't know why I put a. Some reason I'm thinking that a6. Uh, king uh, b7 would be a force there. And hmm, I think we're still okay. My only concern about uh, Queen G four is not not that it's not a good move. It's bishop takes um, G uh, B six check, which is a killer. That's a killer move. We're in uh, deep trouble after that. I just I'm trying to figure out a way. Uh, how to handle yeah the, they want to just they have they'll have they have four pieces attacking us they have a uh, rook on b1 queen on b5 rook on a3 or a4 and then a bishop on e2 uh, f2 what happens when you start with bishop takes g? Well, see, the only problem with that is I don't think we have a continuation after he takes. See, so yeah, bishop takes g3, uh, bishop takes g3, and I don't know the continuation. I may be reacting to the position that that could be a a problem too. If only we can remove uh if only we could remove that bishop, that would really the F two bishop, that would really help our uh attack. So, do you have a line though? Play the grub for the knight takes e5 though. Do you have a kind of line that you're looking at? Well, because the only reason I say, uh, said anything about that was, yeah, you have to um, always have a, a line involved. Well, 
I think we have a lot. See, if, uh, yeah, if he did take, but if he did take with uh, the bishop. But see, uh, knight d4 uh, is actually a mistake because rook takes d4. I uh, missed that this rook can slide over. Knight takes. Yeah, that is, that is uh, see, Jeremy Silman always says to, yeah, one line, Jeremy Silman always says to, um, with his students, when they were uh, in the amateur's mind, they would just say moves. It's not, it's, it's, it's hard to do lines, he said, but he loved it when his students actually made lines out, like um, variations, and it made him really happy, he said, because uh, those showed that they had uh, depth and I know you guys got depth and the only reason I asked for lines is it, it'll get to you'll get to see if the idea actually fits to your plan and it'll help you in the long run with your game over the board on the computer and you'll be able to get to see what um, like when you're studying grandmaster games you'll be able to see what they're thinking so it's kind of a uh, Bet it's a threefold uh, wonderful thing to have. See, bishop takes, bishop takes, queen uh, g4. Well, I'd probably say mate would uh, end up happening in uh, in that line because um, what would uh, happen after this here? Oops, hold on, let me see. Um, here, he'd more likely to play rook takes. Oh, he can't take, can he? Hmm. I guess, I guess that might not, not, that might not be a bad move, now that we think about it. Because the knight does do a uh, pretty wonderful job of uh, handling the... Hmm, let's take a look at that line. Bishop takes uh, g3 to check a bishop. Oops. Bishop takes g3. Queen a... Um, uh, queen g4. We it does we may actually be okay with taking now that we uh, think about it. Now that I think about it, that I think take I think our knight is actually uh, somewhat okayly placed there. Well, maybe, maybe. Huh. Let's see. Knight, knight takes. Knight takes. Queen a h four. No, he doesn't have his bishop move anymore, does he? Hmm. Interesting. Huh. Wow. That does uh, that does do a lot, doesn't it? It it our knight on c six holds the a five pawn, doesn't it? See, see, play the grab. Our knight on c6 holds the a5 pawn, so that rook actually can't take. Because if it did, our knight can actually take. And the bishop takes g3, bishop takes g3, and queen g4. That sets up for, that does set up for a lot of attack there. Huh. Yeah, once that bishop's off that diagonal, uh, the rook, queen, actually the two rooks and the queens don't have as much power, do they? I didn't think about that. They actually don't have a, a, a lot of power in that line after all the, all the trades. Hmm. Yeah, I'm going to go with the bishop. 
Yeah, I th I think you're a hundred percent on that. Yeah, that that that's a hundred percent. Yeah, because now that this bishop's off its uh, pinnacle of power, f two, now we can bring our queen to g four, and put some pressure on. Hey, how you doing? Also, if the knight tries to go to e two, we can pick up the knight with our. Uh, with our queen and then we have a pretty tremendous of an attack to boot as well and even if he tries to take our knight to go for an attack we're first to deliver the pain of mate yeah see do we want to take uh, we have to take with the knight well Do we want to take with the knight or do we want to take with the pawn? I'm thinking we need to take with, if we take with uh, the pawn, if we take um, B takes uh, A5, he's got queen B6 uh, check and then he'll end up checkmating us with a rook slide over. So he'll end up checkmating us with the rook slide. So we're kind of forced to take with the knight. Yeah, knight takes a5 is uh, almost, that's a forced move. It also protects our pawn. So we bring another uh, defender into the fight. And now we can, uh, oh, we can pick up the queen. There we go. Yeah, the the whole idea, um, play the grab, it's not that the knight moves not a good idea. It's just this knight actually covers here, and this bishop is the pain. So by taking, and then queen here, um, knight takes, and it's all over. If we take here, I think he's actually winning. Bishop takes, b6, and... Uh, B takes, queen takes A5, and I think we're uh, mate, mate 5 there. So good thing we uh, took our time, because we would come here, and then queen A8, king C7, and then rook A8. And if we try to run, he can actually uh, take with check, and we're just going to get, we're getting tore apart. It's all based on... Uh, this bishop here and this doesn't work either because the rook could just slide over it wham I oh, should gee so if he does take so, so we were winning so that move wasn't a bad idea and if queen take if bishop takes then it's mate three I mean mate six It's actually queen takes a5 here. Pawn takes a5 and then uh, here. And bishop takes and it's it's all over. All over. Uh, not fun. There's a lot of variations in that line that we had to go over. Okay, at first glance, what I'm looking at is uh, g7 check. He has to move uh, king uh, g8, rook e8, check, king uh, h7, uh, g8 uh, equals queen check king uh, h6 and then queen to g6 mate
Oh, that's a mate in one. My bad, missed that. So that that's a mate in one. We had mate two. That was mate in one though. Yeah, that is true. <laughs> it's kind of funny. This looks, it looks like you can't push. C7, if rook uh, b6, rook b6, check. You have king to c5. And uh, he can't stop the the pawn from queening at that point. There's no way to stop the pawn from queening when we go king c5. If he tries b7, we, we actually queen c8 equals queen check. And we actually can pick up the rook and win. I really don't see any other best move but pushing yeah I'm, I'm gonna go with that huh okay so he checked that way See, if we take here, it's a draw. I think, I think, let me see. Yeah, I think you're right. King C, uh, King C6. And then uh, Rook uh, C5 check. Uh, and then now at that point we can actually take king takes c5 and then if uh, king uh, d7 we have king uh, b6 king b6 and we hold Well, we'll just throw in. Yeah, we have to move the king, so we'll. Yeah, knight to f7 is uh, is important. Well, now we can go king. Uh, we could actually go uh, king to uh, b7 here, and if king takes um, f7, we can play uh, king takes a8. He can't come uh, back, so yeah. Knight d6 allows. Um, see, if we go knight d6, uh, Viking, the king will actually come out to like e7, and that allows that allows the rook to escape. See, it, it'll it'll allow the rook to escape. We can't ha we can't let the king move yet. See, all the squares are covered. See, when we move king b7, uh, we're attacking the rook, and we're covering c8, 
b8 and the knight's covering d8. So now if the rook slides back to d8, we can actually take with the pawn uh, queen check and it's protected by the knight. But if the king moves up, the rook gets the whole open file, just uh, open rank to itself. So we, we actually have to at the moment leave uh, the knight there and play uh, king b7. Yikes. Ugh, didn't think he was going to do that. That's not fun. Now what do we do? Now what do we do? I guess we could check, can't we? Let's see. Ay, ay, ay. Um, I think we need to check the king away, if I'm not mistaken. Let's see. Knight e5 check if king stays intact with d6 we can actually play uh, knight c4 c4 check and if king goes back to d7 we have knight uh, b6 check uh, fork So, wow, well, surprisingly, that was a 2100 level puzzle. I thought it would be more like a 26 because of how many moves it was, but... Let's take a look. All oh, right, we got some pawn movement. Good, good, good. Okay, g4 check is the first line. Uh, um, uh, king has to go back. Only one square. King g2. Then we go f uh, f3 check. King has really only one uh, one. He's got two squares. I guess he can go to. Let's, but he has to stay in contact with the rook, so king e1 is forced again. Um, yeah, exactly. And I'm, I'm not sure if we can uh, potentially win the... Can we actually win the pawn here? At this point, we have to decide what what do we want to um, accomplish. Yeah, we fork, but yeah, that 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 is the plan right here. And then, do we uh, take the rook right now? Do we take the rook right now? Let's see. Rook takes. See that that's one thing we have to look at is um, F takes E2 check. King takes uh, E2 and then we have King E uh, E4 and now we have the we have the opposition at that point. We have the opposition though at, at that point though. And then we can always retreat. We can always retreat our uh, king back and stop these pawns. See that that's we have to figure we have to get that rook. Our whole idea is to get the rook off the board and after a queen e4 we have opposition. He has to move. He only has two moves he can play at that point after e4. He can play either c4 or uh, a4, and in any co either way we play uh, b takes uh, c4, 
or uh, A takes uh, C4. Either one we win. Or, uh, sorry, B takes uh, A4. You know, I did it, uh, sorry, uh, B takes uh, A4. That's what I mean, B takes A4. The only problem with that is if we uh, if we do go king e uh, e4 right now, the rook can actually slide away to like c3 or c2. The the rook can actually slide to c2 at that moment, and uh, we lost our opportunity to uh, attack the rook. This this way we're totally squeezing the life out of our opponent, and uh, we'll have two pass pawns. We'll have two pass pawns, and uh, if he uh, on this move here. Oops, hold on. If he plays, we'll say, king uh, e one. Then we, uh, he gives way, and so now we can go king d3. We can actually move in king d3 at that point and start pecking on his c3 pawn. And so we, you have to think, um, yeah, yeah, and you just take that. Ooh, that's a sneaky move. That's sneaky. Very, very sneaky. We have to stay in, in opposition, uh, distance opposition to our opponent. So what we're going to have to do is go king uh, e5. So that upon him playing king takes e2, we then can triangulate to uh, king e4. King e4 at that point. We triangulate back there. It's about triangulating uh, at this point. You have to come here. This is uh, a vital move. 14%. See, uh, what happens, the reason it's 14% is at this point, our, uh, the, P, the players usually play here. And then uh, we're actually losing at that, that point because now we have to give way. And when we do, he takes. But if we move uh, king e5 and then he takes, then we can come in. And if he goes, we'll say king here, we actually come in and now we can start munching on these guys. And we don't really much care. We just munch, come over, munch. And even if he gets this pawn here, we munch all three of these pawns. And actually, maybe uh, better might actually have been coming over here. That might actually have been a better idea. I'm thinking that we can take there. And now we uh, we can come up. So, But I'm not sure. I, I like actually playing here. Uh, this is going nowhere. There's no reason to uh, come over and try to munch that. If he comes back, we then can actually push. And then when he gives way, we come in and we uh, can queen. Uh, that's funny. Okay. Uh, they're heat. They're heating up on us. Some of the puzzles. They're they're making them very hot and spicy. So we need to win. That's a joke. Uh, that's bad. We need to uh, keep pushing forward, and uh, we're on a hot streak like in basketball when a basketball player just keeps, you know, shooting, and they 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 don't even get any rim. It just goes whoosh, like that. They're they're called they're they're on a hot streak at that point, and we're on a hot streak, so we can't let down our uh, hot streak of puzzle solving. First of all, though, you have to you, you have to sometimes look a little bit beyond even that. You have to make sure that you're not overlooking anything. So 
you have the ability for checks. So let, let's see what would happen if queen g, uh, just take your time, don't, don't rush. See, whatever you do, don't rush. Because we, we always have enough time to gain the points back. But we can, at this moment, take time right now and write a line out. Let's see, check. Um, bishop f8. Just just take a quick look now. Now the uh, rook's pinned, so we have to take a, a look to see: do we uh, gain enough? See, we're down material, though, guys. We're um, we're down material. Do you see? He has a rook and three pieces. Yeah, we are, we're actually down material here. We'd be down material after that line. We he'd have a he'd have two bishops, and we would have. Uh, I mean, he'd have a rook and two bishops, and we would have a rook and a knight. We uh, we're actually down material. Huh. Interesting. But we don't have that pin anymore. Yeah, see, rook takes um, d2. Rook takes d7. Queen uh, takes d7. Queen, hmm. Queen check. Two bishop there. Rook takes. Interesting. Maybe that is right. Okay, so we have rook takes d7, um, knight takes d7, our queen takes d7, queen check, bishop uh, f8, rook takes king d8, queen takes f8, if uh, queen intercepts, then we can actually play rook takes uh, queen check. And then we can actually pick up, we'd be a lot of material up. Hmm. I think that, I think that's the move if I'm not mistaken. Seen any? Did we just grab the the queen? I think we grab uh, the bishop with the queen. Yeah. I want to see the continuation of that though. That that does puzzle me. Ah, that's I knew there was something. What would happen if king there? Oh, King D2, okay. Kazam. 
Gotta love that. Okay. I just had to see how it would um, end up. That was interesting. Wow. Okay. First and foremost, I'm looking at potentially rook uh, c7. Trying for a queen, uh, queen takes c7. And then bishop takes uh, f6 uh, with a tremendous attack to boot. Oh, queen d7, I think we just pick up the, we can actually win the, if uh, rook c, c7, queen uh, d7, rook takes d7. Oh, I gotcha, you were mean, uh, okay, I gotcha, gotcha. I see what you're saying. Yeah, I see what you're saying. So, okay, so I'll re put that in. There we go. We'll fix that, not to worry. Oh, we still, we can still uh, pull the queen away. This time we play uh, rook uh, d7. You can play rook d7 at that point. Okay, rook takes, queen takes, bishop takes. But what if the king takes though? See. If uh, rook takes f8, king uh, king takes f8, and nothing ever nothing ever changed. And we don't we don't have enough time for a queen to f5 because bishop uh, takes uh, e5 is uh, or e4 sorry. We don't have enough time for a queen to. Uh, Queen, not uh, I don't know where I got six from. F four. Uh, we don't have time for that. Yeah. I think we're. I think this is the the line. If I'm not mistaken, this here. And then if uh, let's see if 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 queen uh, takes d seven. Uh, bishop takes f um, f six at that point. And when uh, he's in deep trouble, deep waters at this point, he's in he's in deep waters, really really deep waters. We 
we're almost mating. I'm thinking that's right. What do you guys think? Don't really see anything more than we could do. There we go. Yep, exactly. Right on. Right on, right on. And uh, we'll we'll go over that really uh quick here. Surprisingly, that ended up being a uh, uh, draw, sadly. F here, and then rook d7. If he takes, then bishop takes his mate in three. See, there's no way to avoid mate at this point. You can actually take here, king there. First of all, you can just do that. So the computer just decided to uh, say quits on that and just take and try to hold on with his two, uh, three pieces. But the problem with that is, we yes, he has three pieces for a um, for a queen, but we have a bishop. So we're actually up, and then we got these passers. So we're dominating. We're doing good for sure. Okay, I will be right back. I will throw up a unrated puzzle, and we'll go over that one while I'm gone. I'll put it up there for you. There we go. There we go. Let me ask a look at that one. So what did, uh, let's see here, what, what have you, uh, what did you put down for a uh, puzzle, I mean for the puzzle, did you, 
Do you have any lines? You're funny. Let's see here. And that's not true. You got you're doing great. You know that. So don't don't ever think that. It's just a, it's a lot of uh, work, practice, and struggling to. Uh, was it? <coughs> Excuse me. Oh. Ah, pardon me. Uh, it's just a lot of struggle to get to the level where. <laughs> where you can see those puzzles, trust me. A lot of nights and, uh, and afternoons of study. But in the end, it uh, pays off. Yeah, but we have to... We gotta be careful. See, we can't we can't take the night, otherwise we get skewered. That would not be fun. I'm thinking if we are to do a, the queen check, queen um, excuse me, queen g4. And uh, he's going to have to go king um, e3, king e3. We want to try to win. See, we gotta try to win the knight with our queen. Yeah. That's that's the whole that's the whole point. But uh behind um the queen uh check and the knight, if we can get them working together, they're an unstoppable team. Yeah, I'm thinking that this is the Yeah, that's the move there.
between G3. Let's see. G3 check. If King D2. Hmm. I guess we win, yeah. See if uh, Queen D2. Hold on, let me uh, take another look at this. There, there. <clears throat> queen F, uh, Queen F, uh, two check. If King uh, C, two, or C one, King C one. That is true. But we still have a problem though. He can actually after uh, queen uh, e6 he can go king d2. He can go uh, king d2 is big there. Well, I guess we might be able to mate. I think. I think at that point. I think if we if he did that. We, you might be on the right track there. Let me see. Queen uh, d5 check at that point. Oops. Queen d5 check at that point. And then if king um, e3, let's say king e3, we, uh, hmm, what do we do after that? Uh, arg. Oh no, we win it when we, with queen e e three. We take uh, queen takes a one. Ah, nice. Queen takes a one. We take the queen at that point. Nope, nope. My bad. That doesn't work. <laughs> Sorry. I was thinking of something else. I was thinking if we can get a check here, but the queen's there. That's not going to work. Miscalculation there. That that does work too, yeah, yeah. I'm liking. So now we got now that we have that. Let's see what we can uh, if we have any more pressure attacks. So now what to do? Queen G four. So uh, Queen G four check. If King F six. Let's see Knight E four check. Hmm. Yeah, then when he tries to come uh, over on the dark squares, that's what we win. Yeah, I see what you're saying.
we actually now now we could play queen uh, g7 check and king takes uh, king takes e uh, five e4 and then queen takes uh, a1 Oh boy, this is uh, interesting. Yes, it was. You did great. Yeah, that's <laughs> Bishop H6 is pretty. Uh, straightforward for sure well <laughs> bishop h6 rook uh, d1 uh, d2 check and then bishop takes d2 we pick up a rook in that line. He might try that. Let's see, is there any? Oh, he's got, this is the problem here. Uh, bishop h6, uh, uh, queen f3 check. We could play the in between bishop takes e4, bishop takes e4 idea. And that, that removes um, all of his ideas of any attack. And then what would happen is we can then, well, after bishop takes e4, when queen goes to um, g1, if queen goes to g1, we then could play potentially bishop, uh, no, we can't do that, not yet. Well, maybe bishop, uh, no, well, yes, maybe bishop h6 at that point. Oh, queen g4, we actually uh, win the, um, we pick up the queen with uh, h takes g4. I'm thinking that that's, uh, that's the only way really to hold and then when we uh, play um, bishop takes if he goes queen g1 and bishop h6 this line here so he might try queen takes uh, rook uh, queen takes 
a1, uh, queen takes g, queen takes g, um, 7, check, and then when king goes to e8, bishop, g, uh, g6, g6 is uh, mate. I'll show you the end of the line. The end of the line. Okay. Be blessed. Bye. And be safe as well, always. Always be safe. Because it's a pleasure to have you on the broadcast, always. Right here. And then if he takes, it's mate in two. Wham, and then wham, there's your mate. Let's see how much time do we have left. Uh, I better, um, I have a game I want to go over with, uh, with you guys. It's a uh, French defense uh, for uh, black, so I was going to... <clears throat> it's a, it's a pretty longer game, so I, I we probably have to start now, and we'll do we'll do that, and then uh, if we have time, maybe we'll uh, we'll do one puzzle. This is uh, this this is a uh, E Burge is known for playing the French defense. I listened to Simon Williams, and he he said that there's a couple grandmasters that are really good with the French defense, and they play it a lot. This uh, gentleman here plays it uh, as black a lot. Okay. And it's the ta the I like the Tarash variation. This is uh, the main attacking points here. Then c3, uh, knight c6. This this is a uh, somewhat of a common. There's there's a universal system. This is more of the universal system. And with that, you can potentially expand more later on with a6, b5, and get some expansion. Also, you can at, at this point uh, take too. You can potentially take here, and then if takes. And then now you have uh, uh, bishop b4. And if he castles, you then can uh, compile on on the pressure. So he, he went for more of, yeah. Oh, a good a good one to um, to go over would be um, of course AlliedChess.org has uh, some. Uh, this site right here is free. Uh, ICC Chess. That's a that's a good one. I believe I'm typing that. Nope, sorry, two wrong one. Sorry, I think I have two. Uh, I think I have um, I have typed that in wrong. One second. I believe. Let me see if I if if it's is it two eyes? Oops. Nope. One. Apologize. Hold on. I'll get that typed in right. Oops. RG. This is a that's a good one. This the second one's good. And uh, Simon Williams, uh, if you're interested in the in the French defense, Simon Williams, uh, Ginger GM, he has some uh, good resources there on uh, YouTube. St. Louis uh, Chess Club has some really good resources on uh, their website too. Uh, that's um, 
out there for everybody. It doesn't cost to, uh, you know, do it. Uh, that's on YouTube. Let me see. What else is a, a good one? I think that's about it for, I'm not, I don't know a lot of the uh, uh, freer uh, websites. All I know is YouTube has some good ones, St. Louis Chess Club. Um, I see I, uh, lichess.org's good. Oh, I think that's, that's the only free stuff I really know. <laughs> I have a, I have a cousin who knows a whole bunch about the, a lot of the uh, free chess stuff. I usually either do um, lhs.org or book studies or um, y you have to pay for chess.com for their uh, tactics and stuff but the um, I'll, I'll show you. You, you can actually uh, there's tactics on lhs.org too. So Oops, hold on. Let me get that to come up real quick. Perfect. Come on. We're not going to do any tactics, but I just wanted to show you. They have puzzles. If you if you uh, sign up for free, they have puzzles, and you can actually train for, for free on their puzzles. And they have puzzles, all different types of puzzles and, and cool stuff. And you, they have learning material, basics, studies, all these different uh, chess basics. You can even watch people play. They're streamers. They even have video archives. A lot of cool stuff on their site. So it's just a world of opportunity on alliedchess.org. Yeah, the person who uh, uh, created it said he wanted to make it so that uh, the information for the chess community is free rather than you have to pay for it. And I watched a uh, um, a YouTube uh, um, thing on that for him. Pretty really cool uh, gentleman. Okay, see so takes takes and. Perfect. Then just stick with it. You, it's uh, chess is something that you. It's. Um, I watched a uh, a movie called uh, called uh, it was uh, Bud's Class. Uh, I think it's uh, two thirty four, and uh, the coach the um, teachers on there said that their uh, seal life and same thing with chess life uh, is. A, it's a life. It's not. It's it changes you. What that means is you're different. So it's a way of thinking. That's what I should say. Chess is a way of thinking. Oh. Well, let me see. There is a. I think chess. Chessopenings.com. I'm not. I'm not exactly sure. I think uh, maybe chess. Uh, I think that. I think that's. Hold on. Let me make sure that I. I have that right. Hold on. Let me pull that up because I. I believe that's. That's the. That's one of them. Hold on. Hold on, let me make sure. Okay. Chess openings. So, oops. It's this right here. Copy. I think I put it in wrong. There we go. He has some uh, uh, resources on openings. Yeah, he has some teasers that you can learn a little bit on. Oops, wrong one. Okay. That's the, kind of the best I could do for openings for you is this one here. Yeah, and then, uh, see, this is, uh, at this point, see, in, in the French defense, there's two breaks. There's C5 and F6. So that's why the F6 uh, came in. 
you have to time it at the right moment otherwise a queen a queen will come sliding here with a knight coming in and you, you don't want that so castle is bishop now that the center is somewhat dissolved this is actually beneficial for uh, black uh, knight uh, f3 uh, queen uh, c7 uh, and we're taking scope here and maybe even uh, gonna go queenside castles let me make sure that this actually comes up just hold on yep perfect I just wanted to make sure that came up. So it did it did come up good. So castles, castles. Now this is under fire. By playing um, G3 though, now is now our opponent has created gaping holes on F3 and H3. So we can uh, later on take scope on this. This is also an idea too that um, black white wants to trade off um, the bishop for the for our bishop so you have to be uh, on guard for this is our good bishop but because we have a free reign we can actually open up and make our other bishop good there you go Yeah, we don't want to, uh, ooh, that wasn't a wise decision on that person's part. We do have a, um, a isolated pawn, but the problem is now we have the two bishops, and when pawns are on the opposite color or opposite board side, like the queen side the king side, uh, bishops are like the outstanding pieces. They're, they're the snipers in, uh, you know, They'll set up and you won't even know what hit you. Wham. That's a good move there. He got his pawn. He's up a pawn, but not for long, though. Because now we're taking scope here. And we can even come back and grab that. Now we're attacking the rook. He has to move. And the rook will slide back. He'll take there. He traded. Now this there's a pin here. We're attacking here. So we can actually, in theory, if he plays something silly like this, we can actually grab the um, potentially that. But I don't know if that actually wins. I don't think it does. It looked good, but it doesn't win. <laughs> mm, that's the reason. I knew there was a uh, sitch. This is the sitch here. Every move has a draw, every pawn move has a drawback. Ooh, we got the um, pawn back. So if the queen takes over here, we can actually play rook takes. And then if the queen takes here, we actually take there. So he can't take. And then if the rook takes, we take here. We're guarding the pawn. And we have two versus three. He's got three versus two, so... Now we're guarding here. If he tries there, e8. Queen uh, to c5. Takes, takes. <clears throat> and he takes here, we take. And it, it's going to be a long, drawn out battle, but because we have the majority and his king is farther away, we have the out, something called the outside pass pawn. And we have a more active rook. So the uh, Philidor's position doesn't actually work.
for for them. Are the Kings becoming more active? His uh, you gotta be careful with uh, your king because sometimes if you get it barricaded in here, let's say the king's here, and let's say we play. Um, we'll just say he plays here, and then we play in, and then he plays here, and then he actually sorry, then he plays here, then let's say he plays there. That's actually mate, so. Be careful walking into mate. You don't want to do that. Yeah, he's got to keep hold of that pawn. His rooks actually locked down to the protection, the babysitting of that pawn there. King. He could check, but if he does, we just come up, then he comes back, and <clears throat> so it's not beneficial for him to check. And if we try, I know what you're thinking, if we try pushing, yeah, he's got this here. So he would have to come here, and then we could actually take there. So I'm, I am not sure why he didn't push, actually. Oh, I think it's because he can get in behind. He could try this, but if he does, then we uh, win the rook. So every move has a weakness, and this is the weakness to that uh, rook move. He can't take, so he's got to come there, check, and when the king comes... Rook takes, and he can't take again because that you lose there. Now we're now we're winning. Pawn push, up the board we go. Now we can play a kind of like a Lucinda position. And there's really no way to uh, uh, stop, like if he checks. You can actually uh, do that, and then takes, king takes, and if here, If he uh, plays here, we, we kind of want to try to get involved, not there. He'll take here, here, there. You want to you wanna try to get involved over here, and then if he comes in, you can actually ch check, and then if he comes up, then you, you have this fork right here. He has to come. I think we're winning, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. Oh, it's a draw. Huh. Oh, okay. He gives way there. Gotcha. I knew I missed something. If he takes there, we grab that. And we just come over and gobble that up. And so that's why he resigned. Okay, well, uh, let's see. Are you uh, ready for uh, some more puzzles? We'll, we'll try one more puzzle. And let's see what we got here. We'll do one more and then I, I'll see if, uh, if we have enough time. We want to make sure we get this one right.
So bishop from b3 to e, or c1 to e3. He wants to, I guess he's going to try to save his position. Also, the reason he played bishop to uh, e3 was he was concerned about us playing bishop to d4, which would uh, take advantage of this uh, diagonal here. Now the queen covers g3, g4. Huh. Well, I'm looking at potentially bishop takes c3. Bishop takes c3. If b takes c uh, c3, then I'm looking at rook uh, takes e4. And then I uh, want to play as uh, rook uh, g4 uh, check. That's kind of an idea that I was looking at. Is there anything else? Because I, I want to get my rook to g4 if I could. He can't move his knight. He potentially can move his rook. But if he moved his rook, then uh, we, we take the knight. If he goes rook e2, we just actually come back. The reason uh, bishop uh, bishop takes c3 is a uh, killer move is it attacks it attacks the r on e1 too as well. <clears throat> so I'm just trying to see I looked at the bishop the bishop uh, g4 idea. <clears throat> the queen can actually just come up to queen 2 um D2, and I don't know if we really have anything after that. The uh, bishop takes c4, I mean c3, 
He has bishop f2. Actually, if he does bishop f2, that's a uh, that's a blunder on his part, because then we can actually play uh, queen g5 g5 check, and then it'll end in potentially mate to come. Yeah, that'd be mate to come. That'd be a big time mistake if he did uh, bishop f2. I don't really see any. Um, let's see, does he have really anything that he can do to stop after bishop takes c? He can play rook e2. Then we can actually play rook takes um, e4 at that point. go with it. A rook check on, we can't, uh, checking on uh, g5 really does nothing because the bishop can intercept at that point to g3. So queen, uh, g5, bishop, g3, and the attack is over. So if we do rook, um, rook g4, check, queen's going to have to take on g4, and then we take back. If the knight intercepts or bishop intercepts, rook takes and it's mate. Yeah. Yeah, we're probably going to maybe call it on that. Let's see if we... Maybe I could do a lesson over here. Let's, let's go back and we'll talk about the French defense a little bit. Because I'm... <laughs> That was a lot. We did good on that. Uh, 26, 34. Nice job. Nice, nice job. Nice work. Oh, wait a second. Yeah, you wanted to talk about some of the moves on here. Sorry. Yeah, we should probably go over this. Let's see how we're doing. Perfect. I have enough time to... Uh, well, we'll look at some lines here. Okay, here. So, let's see. What lines were we going to do? Okay. You, we were looking at bishop uh, g4, uh, queen c d2, and he actually holds. So there's nothing there. Do you have any other lines you would like to look at, Viking? Hey, it's uh, you just gotta spend uh, spend time with it. I gotta tell you, I know I used to uh, have the same sitch. I would move way too fast, and I would have to. Uh, you have to look at the board and make the board become alive to you. So you don't have really any more. You don't have any other ideas that you're looking at. Because uh, well, if not, then I can. Uh, we'll teach some uh, 
French defense ideas. If uh, if you want to do that, would you like to go over some French defense for an opening? Because I can teach for about like ten minutes before I got to log. Yeah, if, uh, this is kind of the I I idea I was looking at, but Rook takes and it really doesn't do very much. Like King H2, Rook takes E, Rook takes, and Queen to uh, G5 picks up a, a piece. So that doesn't uh, work. If Bishop here, Queen E5, um, knight g3 and then I think we can uh, potentially play bishop right bishop takes rook that's right that was the idea then if bishop takes we got rook takes c4 <coughs> uh, excuse me and now we can uh, remove this and then go for mate and if king try king can't run so if he comes up here, then you have bishop g4, and now you're attacking the queen. And if he takes here, you have queen h, oops, queen h6, not that. King there, and then we, we pick up the queen, there we go. And we'll go over a little bit of French defense here. There's the advance variation, which is e5. There's uh, the Tarash variation, which is knight d2. There's the Winnier variation. Let's see, what else is there? Oh, there's the exchange variation. There's the classic line of the French. There's also a stein, there's a kind of burn variation of taking. Knight takes bishop. This is kind of, these are kind of like sublines and you could take there. Exchange will force a queen trade early. Oh, will the exchange will it force a queen trade? Well, you could. You could if you wanted to. But the majority of the players would play either knight f3, c4, or bishop d d3. There are some that, if they want to just go towards a draw, you could do that. And, or if you wanted to go for a kind of a win here, you could go bishop there. Then if he plays here, then you have f6. And now, now you can uh, castle. Like if he tries here, you just castle. And then now he can you can castle queenside, and then it's who could fling the board, pawns up. And um, the winnier is an interesting uh, line.
this point you the queen would come back here and then you have you have lines like this this is the poison pawn variation for um, uh, black I have takes takes queen takes knight in I went over some of uh, Grandmaster Simon's moves. I have to go over some of the lines that I wrote down. But this is a 13, like a 13 to 14 move variation that you can go over. There's other lines. I'll have to uh, bring my cards up that I worked on, and we'll have to go over some of the lines. That's probably what we'll do tomorrow. I'll, I'll have to bring some of my cards up, and we'll go over a couple variation lines. And then we'll we'll work through them, and we'll uh, get better at the French, because we went over the London for a while. We'll go over the French. Okay. Do you have any uh, other questions on it on the French defense or anything before we log? Oh, lines. Well, lines are. Um, we'll go back here. Like the French defense line is um, e4. It'd be uh, e4, e6, d4, and then uh, d5. That would be considered a line. These moves, and uh, it would go out to a uh, certain some uh, French variations. Some of the lines go all the way out to 15 moves. Well, I'm trying to help with what I what I know that's uh, that's good resources. That it helped me when I first was starting. That that gentleman who has that. Oh, right. You have to and. See what you have to do is predict what you have to. Um, Simon Williams, uh, Jeremy Silman says that what you do is you have to make the best move for your opponent because that trains that trains you then for you to make the best move. So the concept of lines is um, like opening lines are like. Um, the best moves. They're the moves that the Grandmasters worked out best for both sides. Like this, this is the best. This uh, move, these moves here, e4, e6, d4, d5. This, this is the best for white. And this is the best moves for white against the French. And it's all. It's and that's why you go over opening theory, some opening theory. But you want to also have. Um, end game theory too. What that means is you want to go over some end games. End games is uh, where a lot of games are either drawn or won. That that we're losing in the middle game. <laughs> so if you know your end game you can uh, potentially save a game. I hope I answered your question okay. you have any uh, more questions before I log off? Okay. Great. Well, thank you all for logging on. We're doing good. We even got to do a little bit of French defense, and um, it was it was fun. We're we're improving. We have to be patient. Doesn't matter how long it takes. We get the we we find the right lines. The best idea is 
to find every line that your opponent could do. And in the puzzles, of course, not not an over the board game because you don't have a lo large amount of time like we do with home study. So you have to basically, like Ali Alakide said, and Emmanuel Lasker, you have to find the best moves, two to three best moves if you can, and uh, work out which one gives you the best uh, resources in the position, and then play that one. But don't spend like 30 minutes or 40 minutes unless it's a very critical point in, in the game. Because you want to have time for your end game uh, play. And it's very vital that you have time for end game. Because end games get somewhat complicated. And also, I know it's like, but you probably say to yourself, but all end games look very similar. Yeah, but to calculate out those lines take a little bit of time. Because you can make a mis slight mistake in the middle game, but if you make a mistake in the end game, you're uh, you're toast. <laughs> uh, you know, it's just how it's just how it is. There's a lot. If you allow a pass pawn, an outside pass pawn, and you're and you can't get there in time, it's going to queen. And if you uh, don't, if you pass the opposition, or if he, or if you have to move and then he takes the pawn. Sometimes that that's over, and you just have to be on guard with all your uh, perspectives of every area. There's opening, middle, and end game, so give adequate time to each one. Life is about uh, treasuring your victories and learning from your losses. That's very important. And remember that mistakes don't define you. It's how you handle the mistakes that define you as a chess player and a person in life. We have to um, also remember what Bruce Lee said. There are no limits. There are plateaus, and we must not stay there. We must go beyond them. And willing is not enough. We must do. And we have to um, always remember that the Lord is the one who gives us our every breath, our thoughts. And he's, he's the one that we should always give honor to with the puzzles and everything that Without him, we don't uh, we don't have anything. And you know what? All glory goes to the Lord because uh, He's given me the gift. He also directed me to a wonderful teacher, who taught me all the stuff that I'm learning now, that I'm teaching you, my friends. So uh, my teacher's legacy lives on through uh, my teachings. And uh, like what the like what is what is written, it says. Yeah, you give honor to whom honor, tribute to whom tribute. And uh, you have to, like, if you learn something from your teacher or if you get a, a comment from, like, even if it's a, a cartoon or whatever that inspires you, write it down. And if you tell somebody about it, always quote them. Like, the two saints that I uh, talked about were from Mission Critical. It was Tom Thumb Thumb. He, uh, he talked to Tango about... Uh, about when she was doubting herself, he he gave her those two uh, wonderful statements that got her back on track, and then she was able to help her team out. But before she let outside things affect the inside, and she wouldn't uh, under she didn't understand that a mistake is part of life, and it's not to dwell on the mistakes; it's to learn from them and understand that they do happen. And it's how you handle them that that may uh, make you. That's basically what Tom Tom, Tom Thumb Thumb has t told her. Was uh, that you're dwelling on yourself when your friends are out there and they need you. So, so sometimes uh, those type of times when we're you know like you know we we have a boo face and sad face, we need to think about others and keep moving forward and realize that there's. Uh, uh, the Lord's given us another day, another breath, and uh, another opportunity to uh, keep moving forward in honoring Him. We have to always keep keep our tactical eyes sharpened. The Lord has given us uh, two eyes. We also have a mind that kind of has chest sense. We we get a feeling for uh, like certain positions that they're right, and we just you just you get that kind of um, tingle. Like the like Spider-Man had the spidey sense. We have chest sense.
But the main thing we have to do is hang up our coat, hang up our hat, sit down and study when most won't. We do and that makes all the difference. And it does take a while to get chest down. It's not a uh, one-time uh, cram session because chess, like um, uh, buds, is a way of life. So you, uh, to become great, you have to make it a way of life. And you'll start to realize that a lot of things out in, uh, when you're doing stuff, you have to make decisions, you have to work out lines, you have to calculate. So even in life, we use chess. That's why Gary uh, Kasparov's book, um, Life Imitates Chess, does apply to uh, um, our situations at hand, everybody's situations. And like what we always do, we have to, we have, remember what we do, we, Wesley So says through the Lord Jesus, and as I say, God bless, and I'll see you next time on Chess Crutcher TV. Have a blessed morning, afternoon, and evening, and Lord willing, I'll be back on tomorrow. And we'll keep uh, moving forward, and we'll go over some French defense, go over some games, ha learn, have fun, and keep moving forward. Go Team Chess Cruncher. Hoorah. Be blessed, and I'll uh, see you tomorrow. Great job. Keep studying. Bye-bye.